Senator McFedrin. Thank you, Your Honor. Honorable colleague, d'abord. Honourable colleagues, first of all, I would like to highlight my support for the principle and the object of this bill. Clearly, foreign interference upon our democratic institutions is a th serious threat, which must be taken seriously. I welcome this opportunity to place on the parliamentary record some grave concerns about the application, scope and means of this rushed bill entitled Countering Foreign Interference Act. First, a compelling case has not been made for rushing to a vote on this bill when we are in the midst of an independent public inquiry into foreign interference in federal electoral processes and democratic institutions being conducted by an independent commissioner, Justice Marie-José Hogue who has accepted responsibility to address the Enescop report as part of her ongoing inquiry and to report by the end of this year in ample time for development and scrutiny of new legislation. It is deeply ironic that if we as senators choose to truncate our task as the Chamber of Sober Second Thought without ensuring the time for proper study and amendment, it will be civil society that will take on this task, but with resources and authority far less than we have. For example, today, seeing the Senate rushing this bill in less time than the time taken for the anti-terrorism bill in 2001, post 9-11, the Centre for Free Expression, working with the International Civil Liberties Monitoring Group, a coalition of 46 Canadian organizations, announced their plan to create a rights risk monitoring mechanism. The new law created by this bill does need to be monitored because implementation is going to impact internationally protected and charter rights to freedom of expression freedom of assembly, and freedom of association, for example. Civil liberties that are supposed to be protected by our Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms, entrenched in the Constitution of Canada, are endangered by this bill, which is being rushed through Parliament to appease political expediency. In doing so, we are denying Canadians of a more thorough, careful study of this bill, which after all, is our primary role. It is worth noting that the, quote, abuse of process referenced by Senator Tanis today in relation to rushing the budget bill is, by comparison to this foreign interference bill, about five times greater than we have given to this bill now before us. So what are we facing this evening? Speaking time is short, but sadly, my list of concerns is quite long. I have been troubled by signals of foreign interference for years now, and I am one of the parliamentarians for whom foreign interference is real and present. As just one example, earlier this year, media reported that a number of parliamentarians in a number of countries were targeted by a Chinese state-sponsored hacking group, APT31, in January 2021, I was among those politicians targeted due to my work, mark these words please for their vagueness, quote, in association with, quote, pro-democracy groups in Hong Kong. Following those revelations, I contacted the Senate cybersecurity team who conducted an in-depth analysis. ISD confirmed that my office was targeted by malicious malware and other hacking attempts. However, these incursions were identified promptly by our IT team as potentially malicious, quarantined and deleted from our system without compromising our internal networks. I commend the vigilance and quick action of the Senate IT security team. However, I remain deeply concerned that I was not informed that I was, among other parliamentarians, a deliberate target of foreign-backed hacking attempts. And 
My experience as a target does not occlude my clear concern that the language in Bill C-70 will prove to be harmful to innocent Canadians because it is unnecessarily, likely unconstitutionally vague and overly broad. Section 53 of this bill would criminalize several acts made, here are these words again, quote, in association with, quote, foreign entities that would prejudice Canada's interests. To my eye, this wording does not sufficiently delineate between criminal activity and well-intentioned and innocent cooperation or communication with international partners. Allow me to remind us of the Supreme Court of Canada on the doctrine of vagueness, quote, it is a fundamental requirement of the rule of law that a person should be able to predict whether a particular act constitutes a crime at the time he commits the act. End of quote. This is from R versus Mabior, 2012. And in the following year, the Supreme Court ruled in R versus Lefkovic, 2013, quote, it is not enough for laws to provide guidance to legal experts. Laws, as judicially, as judicially interpreted, must be sufficiently intelligible to guide ordinary citizens on how to conduct themselves within legal boundaries, end of quote. Furthermore, I believe the scope of activities this bill would render illegal is substantially disproportionate to its objectives. Unlike comparable anti-terrorism legislation, these new crimes do not require the intent to support other illegal activities. Bill C-70 only requires the knowledge of a risk of prejudice to Canada's interests, a term which is not defined and is overly broad. The creation of these new crimes, in addition to the proposed Foreign Influence Registry, will impact freedoms of expression and freedom of association for academics, members of civil society, broadcasters, and business leaders who could soon find their research, advocacy, journalism, or business dealings deemed illegal under this bill as a new law. There is high probability that the proposed registry will also undermine individual privacy rights. Good faith actors who register run the risk of seeing themselves profiled on discriminatory grounds or doxed for their political positions. Definition of and protection of the information collected and published through the registry in this bill are left to regulation. Details completely unknown to us as we face this vote. Honourable colleagues, in light of constitutional protections this bill engages and the importance of the democratic institutions it aims to protect, C-70 should be studied with thorough scrutiny, a process that cannot be rushed in less than two weeks. It is clear that this horse of a bill has the bit in its mouth and is galloping to a yay majority. As the place of sober second thought, thank you for that, I'm glad you got that, Senator Tannis. As the place of sober second thought, we have a duty to scrutinize such important legislation. We should be ensuring that its means will indeed attain its ends, considering evolving regulations. We should be closely examining if any compromise on fundamental freedoms is necessary, rational, minimal, and proportionate. Senator MacDonald, earlier in this debate, affirmed that national security is not a partisan issue. I agree. And I would add that protection of constitutional rights and freedoms is not a partisan issue either. Further, the two are not mutually exclusive. May I remind you of the supreme constitutional protections of privacy, freedom of the press, freedom of peaceful assembly, freedom of expression, and freedom of association. What we as parliamentarians are engaged in right now is a textbook example of the shock doctrine. Defined by Naomi Klein in her prescient book of that name, 
that documents the exploitation of national crises or upheavals to establish laws and measures that can be used to undermine rights and freedoms, while citizens are too distracted, for example, in a financial crisis, to engage and develop an adequate response and resist effectively. I might add that for us as senators charged with careful review of bills that come to us from the other house, whenever those bills may come, an adequate and effective response takes time, and that parliamentarians have a duty not to become distracted from scrutinizing bills that can be used to undermine rights and freedoms. Parliamentarians should not be distracted when changes to sabotage laws, including amendments passed by the House of Commons to extend coverage of infrastructure still under construction, threaten the right to protest, including rights of Indigenous land defenders and their allies. I agree with civil society concerns that the protective exceptions in this bill for protest do not go far enough and could still be used to stifle legitimate acts of civil disobedience or dissent. I believe we are seeing here what Klein observed in several countries that she studied. Quote, democracy and human rights are often trampled upon in the guise of emergency measures. End of quote. In closing, while I support the policy intent of this bill, and I believe that we do need new law that addresses foreign interference effectively. I also believe that the risks in this bill should be heard as a clarion call for a more thorough study, a study that looks more like what we typically do with major bills, except perhaps when we are hearing the siren call of summer adjournment. In light of the imminent choice for a scrutiny light approach to this bill, I urge that our next step be to refer these issues for further Senate committee study that has been undertaken on this hugely consequential bill. Thank you. Merci. Miigwech.